I'm Amy from the John Silent Library, and I'm really excited to be filming a story time today in the Naturally Kiowa Demonstration Garden in Night Heron Park here on beautiful Kiowa Island. And today we're celebrating Earth Day. So, what makes Earth Day so important for us? Let's see. It's all about appreciating and caring for our natural world, including plants, the land, our water, as well as increasing our awareness of environmental problems. And it reminds us of things that we can do on a daily basis to keep our earth healthy, such as recycling, conserving our water, protecting our bees, planting wildflowers, not using pesticides, not littering, and the list goes on. There's so many things we can do. Also, Earth Day has become a time for many communities to come together to do things like clean up litter, plant trees, or simply reflect on the beauty of nature. And today, we'll be reading books and singing songs that do just that, celebrating nature. Before we get to the books and songs, though, I want to tell you some really cool things about this garden I'm in. So, as I said before, this is the Naturally Kiowa Demonstration Garden in Night Heron Park. And what's really cool about this is that the plants here are native to Kiowa, meaning they grow on the island, and they're perfect as homes for the wildlife that live here. The Naturally Kiowa Habitat Recognition Program, and boy, that is a mouthful, recognizes residential landscapes, people's homes, throughout Kiowa Island for wildlife-friendly landscapes. And this garden is an example of what wildlife-friendly landscaping can look like to the homeowners and guests. The main benefit of understory and ground cover vegetation, pretty much means plants on the ground, those are new terms to me, is to support wildlife by giving them areas for nesting, resting, and movement throughout the island. Let's see, bobcats on the island typically stick around dense shrub thickets where they can move easily without being discovered. They're very private animals. And I am holding up a picture because while I would love to hold a bobcat, don't think I'd be, it would be a smart thing to do. And this one is actually a picture taken right here on Kiowa. So in addition, these plants are also great sources of food and nesting materials for a variety of wildlife. For example, this beautiful passion flower. Passion flower is used as a host plant by several butterflies. Ooh, let's get another one here. Look at this beautiful feathery pink sweetgrass. We're used to seeing sweetgrass as sweetgrass blaskets, which are more of a beigeish color, um, but this is what they look like before they're dried, dried out to be used as baskets. They're so pretty. More, um, this also was taken here on Kiowa. Let's see. Ooh, and look at these pretty yopan holly berries. Ooh. <laughs> Yopan holly berries are a food source for a host of migratory and resident songbirds. And last but not least, coral honeysuckle, so pretty. And they provide nectar for hummingbirds. So those are some amazing fun things about this garden and how important it is for the wildlife here on Kiowa. So are you ready for some songs and books? I sure am. We're gonna start with a really fun song called, If You're Ready for a Story. It's really easy to catch on to, so join in when you're ready. So here we go. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, pat your head. If you're ready for a story, pat your head. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, pat your head. If you're ready for a story, touch your nose. If you're ready for a story, touch your nose. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, touch your nose. If you're ready for a story, rub your tummy. If you're ready for a story, rub your tummy. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, rub your tummy. Yay! Good 
Good job. All right. Our first awesome book today is Harlem Grown, How One Big Idea Transformed a Neighborhood. And this is a wonderful, inspiring, true story that takes place in the Harlem neighborhood of bustling New York City. And the guy who wrote this is also the, the guy whose big idea it was to create this garden in the middle of the city. His name is Tony Hillary. And the illustrations are amazing too, and they are by Jesse Hartland. And before we actually read the story, I want to give, give a big shout out to Simon and Schuster for allowing us to read this online. So here we go. Be ready to be inspired. Once in a big city called New York in a bustling neighborhood called Harlem, there was an empty lot. Look at this empty lot and we've got this bustling city. Nevaeh called it a haunted garden. It was cluttered with wrecked couches, old TVs, broken bottles, and empty cans. Look how sad it is. Ew, all that litter. Once in a big city, in a bustling neighborhood, there was Nevaeh's school. PS 175 it was called, and it sat across from the haunted garden. There's your school and all the kids going in, and look at that awful littered garden across from it. One day, a man came to PS 175. Mr. Tony, the kids called him. That's Mr. Tony. When Mr. Tony saw those kids in the haunted garden, he had an idea. Oh yeah. He began to clear the haunted garden. One piece of trash at a time. Look at everybody with those wheelbarrows hauling out that trash. That is awesome. Soon it was a clean slate, a blank canvas. Mr. Tony laid down new clean soil. He invited Nevea to help. Look at them with their wheelbarrows and dirt. Seeds, shovels, water. Nevea started to plant. And here's this little diagram that she has here. Number one, we're planting the seeds. Number two, we're putting in some dirt. Number three, we're watering them. And four, it looks like the sun is coming and helping the plants grow. So now onto it. She dug holes in the ground. Into the holes, she placed the seedlings and then she carefully covered them with dirt. Her friends came too. Seedlings went into the ground, one for each kid. 400 kids helping out. How awesome is that? Basil, mint, cilantro, rosemary. Then the kids watered and weeded, and their plants began to grow. Wow. Once when Nevaeh came to the lot after school, her plant was wilted and sad. Uh oh. <gasps> we'll try again, said Mr. Tony. We'll plant something different. If you, you don't succeed the first time, you can just keep trying. Don't give up. Wood, hammer, nails. Mr. Tony built raised beds for the plants. Super cool. The kids tried again. Peas and broccoli, mint and eggplants. They watered and weeded. And at last, do we know what this word is written all in vegetables? F-O-O-D. Food. Tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, blueberries, strawberries, collard greens, kale, basil, arugula. Mr. Tony watched and helped and smiled. More kids came from the neighborhood. They tended their plants, which grew and grew. Up came more fruits and vegetables. The kids took their green beans and carrots and cucumbers home to their families for dinner. I mean, how cool is that? You're cleaning up an empty lot, you're planting a garden as a community, and then you have fresh food to bring home. I love that. Once in a big city called New York, in a bustling neighborhood called Harlem, there was a man with an idea. There were kids who wanted to help and they made a farm. The Harlem Grown Garden, and look how wonderful it is in the middle of this big city. And for anybody who would like to check out this book, remember it's Harlem Grown, how one big idea transformed a neighborhood. There's some wonderful information about it from Tony Hillary, and there he is, about with a wonderful background about how the garden came to be. So I thank y'all for sharing this wonderful, inspiring story with me. Now are you ready for another song? I am. So we're going to sing a song called Bumblebee Bumblebee and I need to switch this out. We're going to become a bee. Here we go. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> 
because one thing we can do to keep our um, earth healthy is to protect our bees. And this is sung to the tune of Jingle Bells. So I'm gonna sing it twice. So sing along whenever you feel like you're, you're ready. It should go pretty fast. So here we go. Bumblebee, bumblebee, landing on my nose. Bumblebee, bumblebee, now he's on my toes. On my arm, on my legs, on my elbows. Bumblebee, oh bumblebee, he lands and then he goes. One more time, here we go. Bumblebee, bumblebee, landing on my nose. Bumblebee, oh bumblebee, now he's on my toes. On my arms, on my legs, on my elbows. Bumblebee, oh bumblebee, he lands and then he goes. Yay, good job, that was super fun. Okay, our next super fun book is called The Nature Girls by Aki, and I think I'm pronouncing that right. In this book, we're gonna go all over the world to see amazing environments, and those include the sea, the jungle, the desert, the African grasslands and plains, the forest, and a cold Arctic tundra. And before I start reading, I wanna give a big shout out to Macmillan for allowing us to read this online for our story time. Here we go. Super fun. There are nature girls and they all have their names. Here we go. We're nature girls. We must explore. We pack our bags. We're out the door. Here they go. And off we go. There's much to see. We'll start our journey by the sea. There they are with their diving gear and bathing suits. Doesn't that look like fun? A pod of dolphins swims nearby. The fish come too. We all say hi. Hi, fish. It's time to go. We march along. We smile at birds and share their song. Looks like they're in a tropical jungle rainforest here and there are all kinds of birds. Look at that toucan. That is gorgeous. On we track across the land. Up ahead we see some sand. What do you think they are? A desert. And it looks like they're doing this archaeological dig. Very cool. A camel pads up to our side. He takes us for a bumpy ride. And I've ridden a camel and they are bumpy rides. Look at them having all kinds of fun. And look at that. There are three pyramids in the background that are, I believe, the three pyramids in Egypt. And tall grass we creep up slow all around our buffalo looks like our buffalo but all kinds of other wonderful animals let's see what we can find got some elephants looks like an antelope and an ostrich maybe a leopard a zebra uh, I think I got them all and it does look like they're on this African safari how so cool they're somewhere different. See you, planes. It's been nice. Now we're off to find some ice. Ooh. <gasps> a tawny owl. She sees us too. She hoots a question. Who are you? Look at them. They're in the snow. We've got some snowball fights going on. Looks like there's a moose in the background. Ooh, they're still in the cold. The tundra has snow everywhere. Look how cute and Arctic hair. Where are the Arctic hairs? Oh, they're white, just like the snow, aren't they? Look, there's one, and there's one. And it looks like they're riding a dog sled. Look at those dogs pulling them. I've always wanted to do that. Ooh, they're somewhere else now. There's one more stop on our big trip. We've got our compass and our ship. Ooh, doesn't that look fun? Oh, I forgot to point out. Look at that big old whale. Isn't he great? The forest lush and filled with sound. Look at all this life we found. There's all kind of life here. And by that, we mean animal life and plant life because we've got these beautiful trees, but they're also, golly, I think we've got some squirrels and a snake and an owl and a fox and a bluebird and a butterfly and some bears. Did I say rabbit already? I don't know. And a centipede and a beaver, all kinds of wonderful life here. It's hard to leave.
leave, but we must go. There's more to see and do and know. Look at this beautiful night sky with all the stars and some shooting stars. So that was so much fun. And just like the other book we read, there's some wonderful information at the end. It's um, all about the biomes, which a biome is a community of plants and animals that covers a large area of the earth. So ones we visited here are aquatic, desert, grassland, tundra, and forest. So please feel free to check out this book uh, about the Nature Girls by Aki. Thank you very much for joining me with that. Okay, now it's time for our closing song and it's called Fish in the Sea. Another thing we can do to keep our earth healthy is to take care of our water by keeping it clean and by conserving it. So we're gonna sing the song and I'm gonna use my scarf and if you have something to wave, please grab something and if not, using your hands is just fine too. So here we go. Fish in the sea go swish, 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 swish. The fish in the sea go swish, swish, swish all day long. The dolphins in the sea swim round and round, round and round, round and round. The dolphins in the sea swim round and round all day long. The waves on the sea go up and down, up and down, up and down. The waves on the sea go up and down all day long. Yay, good job. Thank you for joining me today for this wonderful, fun story time. I had a great time and I hope you did too. And thank you to the Kiowa Conservancy for inviting me to be a part of their fantastic Earth Week celebration. So have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.